I now give the floor to His Excellency Robert Duse, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Regional Integration, and Togolese Abroad Protocol. Escort His Excellency. Le président. President of the General Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government, uh, Secretary General, sir, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I commence on this 78th session of the general institution of our institution, our shared institution, on behalf of my country, Togo, and His Excellency, uh, President Fourier Suzin Nagosingbe, may I express my warmest uh, congratulations to Mr. Dennis Francis from Trinity and uh, Tobago on his election and skill in conducting the, this session. And also, go to not only to his predecessor, Mr. Shaba Kuhosi, who chaired our work last year, but also and above all to Mr. Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who is doing the best he can to re restore the image of the United Nations of a wounded institution despite the procrastination and complexity of the part of the reform. Je voudrais aussi. I wish also to express the condolences and support of the President of the Republic of Togo, Foreo Suse Maganase, and the people of Togo, to the peoples and governments of uh, the brother Kingdom of Morocco and Libya after the earthquake and floods in their respective countries. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, as we come together in this forum, we have to say that our world is overcast by shadows. It is very sick, and this demands that we shoulder a responsibility worthy of the level of the United Nations. All of that challenges. This is a question that we cannot lose enough it our ambition as the United Nations is truly to improve the state of the world in the order to grant our people and our different countries more opportunity, safety, security, and insurance. Our world is increasingly less secure. Trust and solidarity between nations are almost at, at half must and we have the responsibility to work to repair it by, risk, by rediscovering the meaning of our noblest commitments. The choice and the relevance of the term which, uh, gui which guides the general debate of this 78th session of uh, the General Assembly, namely restoring confidence and reviving global solidarity, accelerating action to achieve the 2030 Agenda and its Sustainable Development Goals in for peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability for all. Conveys clearly and unmistakably the unsustainable, disrupt and, sust and unstable state of the world, but also our determination at a higher level to do this in better. The emergence of uh, new sources of tension in the world must concern us. Mr. President. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I come from Togo, from a country and a continent which are sorely tried today, the continent of Africa, our Africa, the Africa of freedom, 
the Africa of our fathers, the Africa of our mothers. Oh, Africa, you are wounded and bruised. Our continent of Africa is facing many vulnerabilities. Uh, vulnerability because of a lack of income. Vulnerability because of a low level of development. Vulnerability given major health crises. Vulnerability attributable to the effects of climate change. Vulnerability due to the disruption of global food supply chains. Vulnerability due to the invasion of African cyberspace by cyber criminals and disinformation. Vulnerability because of recurrent armed conflict and ongoing wars. Vulnerability because of the spread of international terrorism on the continent, which threatens international peace and stability. Terrorism has developed disturbingly on our continent in recent years in the Sahel, in the Horn of Africa, in southern Africa. And Africa runs the risk of becoming a sanctuary for international terrorism and of being the weakest link in the world security system. Our states on the coast of the Gulf of Guinea were long spared terrorism, but we have started to be deeply affected by it. Thus, in order to respond effectively to the threat of terrorism, Togo has adopted innovative and multi-sectoral measures in its strategic document, Combating Violent Extremism, adopted on the 5th of July 2022. This strategy enables us to marry security approaches and development by bringing together operational and legal measures as well as more flexible and uh, endogenous ones. It takes into account the emergency program for the Savannah region. The global cost of this is uh, more than 324 million US dollars to carry out uh, several projects by 2025 in the sectors of water, energy, health, infrastructure, education and agriculture. This is the place to express the, the gratitude of the government of Togo to all our partners in the combat against terrorism and also uh, to urge a constant uh, strengthening of the various partnerships uh, to put an end to insidious terrorism. Given the many situations of vulnerability and crises affecting Africa, which basically don't spare any country on the continent, the government of Togo, for itself, is working to drive forward the development agenda by means of an ambitious roadmap 2020 to 2025. Togo has carried out a series of priority projects for the economic, social, and structural benefit of our peoples. Health, by means of universal health coverage, food sovereignty, socioeconomic inclusion, and decent work that all may flourish and share prosperity, these are the priority planks of the government's action. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the government's endeavours to ensure that Togo is a country open to the world are continuing. We dearly wish to enhance economic, social and democratic stability in order to attract investors and ensure that Togo 
is a desired destination for them. The many actions that we are carrying out are linked to the African and UN commitments of the 2030 and 2063 agendas and are part and parcel of our uh, common uh, striving for sustainable development, which is shared by all UN members. In this program, we have uh, given priority to the protection and conservation of the environment. We wish to act to ensure that Togo's determination to join in the international effort to, to combat uh, climate change uh, becomes real. Thus, in order to manage and uh, protect in a lasting way marine and coastal ecosystems, the government has aimed, on the one hand, at the management and sustainable protection of marine and uh, coastal ecosystems, the regulation of uh, fisheries, the regulation of uh, vulnerability of both people and uh, assets when it comes to extreme climate events. And also we are combating uh, illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing and promoting the blue economy. Regarding the sustainable protection of the marine and coastal environment, Togo has uh, instituted a regional program for the integrated management of the coastline and to combat coastal erosion. Uh, Togo wishes to ensure the protection of 90% of its coastlines by 2025. Then, within the framework of uh, uh, preserving and restoring ecosystems and combating desertification, Togo launched a significant national program of reforestation of a billion trees by 2030. We have prohibited the import, marketing and use of glycophosphate and all uh, products containing it. And we are also promoting uh, the uh, uh, use of biopesticides and biofertilizers in our country. When it comes to renewable energy, strategic and diversified uh, uh, partnerships have been forged to provide reliable, modern uh, services at uh, as low a cost as possible for rural areas. Thus, the fund for access to electricity, called Fontinga, was uh, created in order to ensure that Togo can, by 2030, ensure universal access to reliable, sustainable, modern and affordable uh, energy services. By means of the CISO project, solar energy kits have been provided to vulnerable rural peoples uh, throughout our country. And the government is also untiringly uh, aiming at the installation of a photovoltaic uh, uh, and uh, solar power stations, thus increasing the share of renewable energy in Togo's energy management policy. Mr. President, we wish uh, to commend the commitments entered into and the announcements made during the course of the COP27, particularly the creation of a specific fund to uh, finance the losses and damages affected by vulnerable countries uh, severely affected by uh, climate disasters. This is a major stride forward when it comes to the climate justice that developing countries so much wish to see. However, we must strive to reduce the reduction to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions and the use of fossil fuels into alia. Here, we wish to express our hope that uh, the COP28 scheduled for Dubai in November this year will enable us to note significant progress in the implementation of the commitments uh, that we have taken upon ourselves. The Climate uh, Summit 
on the 20th of September 2023 has come at an appropriate time to demonstrate the existence of a real will to speed up the implementation of a just transition towards an equitable world that is more resilient to climate change. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, with our continent facing a plethora of challenges marked by the expansion of international terrorism and the emergence of new areas of tension, Africa is seeking its own path and Togo supports efforts to achieve peace in Africa. Terrorism and instability in Africa are a problem of international security and they must be treated as such by the United Nations. Our region of West Africa, where several states are in a transition against a volatile security backdrop, must be supported with active solidarity. We must invest more in peace than we invest in war. If the protagonists of the various conflicts throughout the world were to heed us, I wish to say to them that war is a denial of human dignity. Immanuel Kant, the great philosopher of the Enlightenment, said, if those who make war could send their own children to the front, there would never be war. Togo is a country of peace, and Togo is against war, regardless of the reasons for it. Since our independence on the 27th of April 1960, Togo has never waged war on its neighbours. Togo has never attacked its neighbours or any country. Togo has never been a rear base for any attack against a brother country. Togo is a country of peace. Peace is in the DNA of the people of Togo. Togo has always been a country of mediation, of fostering dialogue, negotiation and understanding amongst peoples and governments. The 6th of January this year, 49 soldiers from Côte d'Ivoire were freed thanks to the mediation of the President of the Republic of Togo, Foria Sosima Gassingbe, putting an end to the tension between the governments of Côte d'Ivoire and Mali. Togo has hosted several negotiations for peace, and we can mention Chad in, in 1982, Sierra Leone in 1991, Liberia in 1991, Côte d'Ivoire in 2000, etc., etc. We call for de-escalation and the cessation of hostilities in the various hotspots throughout the world, and in particular in West Africa. Africa has suffered too much from war, and a minimum sense of responsibility uh, should uh, convince us to invest in prevention and the peaceful resolution of conflict. The bad thing about war, said uh, Immanuel Kant, is that it creates more wickedness than it destroys. External interference causes conflict and crisis in Africa. It complicates the search for solutions to our crises and undermines initiatives for African solutions to African crises. External interference is no longer welcome in an Africa which is aware of its responsibilities, its problems of peace, security and development. Africa no longer wishes foreign interference. Africa wishes to be true to itself and master of its destiny. 
Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, for several months in the African continent, uh, Sudan, a brother country, has been affected by an armed conflict which uh, causes much concern. Aware of the importance of peace and security for sustainable and inclusive development, Togo has made this one of the main planks of its uh, development policy. And under the aegis of the President of the Republic, uh, uh, Fori Sosima Gassinghe, uh, we hosted a consultative uh, a dialogue in July this year in Lome uh, between the political and military leaders in Darfur in order to make a contribution to the resolution of the conflict in Sudan. These conflicts made it possible to reach a compromise to put an end to violence and establish a humanitarian corridor. In order uh, fully to execute the uh, commitments entered into in Lome to relieve the suffering of uh, civilian populations, we uh, urge the parties to the conflict in Sudan to choose dialogue and consultation rapidly uh, to settle the differences uh, for the greater interest of Sudan. We harbour the hope that Togo's efforts, which supports other initiatives, will contribute to put an end to this conflict, which strangely does not attract the attention of the international community as much as it should. Recent times have also been marked in West Africa and in the Sahel by the unconstitutional establishment of traditional regimes, raising uh, uh, questions and requiring us to rethink our s systems of governance. Will be examined at Lome Peace and Security Forum, which first edition is, is scheduled for 21st and 22nd October 2023, under the theme, the theme of strengthening transition to democratic governance in Africa. The aim is to examine how to develop strategies to meet the challenges of political transition in a coordinated, relevant, and effective manner. First, with the political and security crises that are transforming Africa, it's even more necessary to adopt a posture of adaptation. Thus, Togo and several other countries decided in Lomé in May 2023 to create the African Political Alliance, which is intended to be a framework for consultation, political dialogue, and joint action based on historical ties of fraternity and the principles of the sovereign equality, equality of state, independence, and unity of action. Pour ce qui est de la réforme. Regarding the reform of the United Nations Security Council, we do not wish to return to this. As we have already said, Africa can no longer be marginalized from the body whose task it is to ensure international peace and security. The Security Council can no longer remain a mere group of the victors and their allies of the Second World War. Nothing can uh, justify maintaining the status quo. The ideologies and institutional structure of the post-war world are now obsolete. The status quo can no longer continue. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at a new era in 
the relations of Africa and the global south with the world. And in this uh, new state of affairs, Africa no longer wants to remain overshadowed by any major power. The times when other bodies they claimed that they could speak on behalf of an Africa that they did not heed at all here in the United Nations and on the international soon scene, that time has passed. The partners of Africa, be they new or old, who are still hesitant in accepting the new course taken by Africa in our development, have to change their attitude and their approach to an Africa which has radically changed. In recent decades, our world has undergone major silent revolutions, the significance of which lies in uh, the renewal that uh, is brought about in uh, international relations throughout history. The reality of the world is that there are no longer uh, monopolistic centers of gravity. The center of the world is now here, not elsewhere at all. Nobody is at the center of the world. What is clear, and what we wish to recall here, is that Africa now uh, perceives its relations with the great powers in relation to its own interests. At this same platform, I told you that Africa no longer wants to align itself with the great powers, whatever they may be. They all assigned to Africa in this 21st century is evocative of the image that certain power of our continent still have, their zone of influence. We, we must be concerned about the place that Africa occupies on the world stage. Today, Africa does not occupy the place it should hold on the international scene. The great, that the great power want to reduce Africa to a purely instrumental entity in the service of the causes and absolutely do not want the continent to be able to play an important role. The fractures of the colonial area between a so-called French-speaking, Spanish-speaking, Portuguese-speaking, Arabic-speaking, and English-speaking have, uh, speaking Africa, have diminished as uh, have the post-Cold War ideology that dominated the entire second part of the 20th uh, century. Today, Africa wants to be itself. And we say today, as we say the last year, we prefer Africanophony. Africa accepts more equality, respect, equity, and justice in this uh, relation and partnership with the rest of the world, with the major power, whatever they may be. Today, Africans want to be true partners. Africa certainly does not have uh, the same megaphones as the great power of the world, but the voice of Africa counts and must count if we want to have Africa as a partner on major international issues. La question de la réforme. The question of the reform of the global uh, multilateral architecture is of great concern for Africa and will be at the heart of the 9th Pan-African Conference of 2024 scheduled in Lomé. For those who do not know, the time has come of an African awakening and this in accordance with the noble objectives of the fathers of African independence. 
Africa and Africans demand and uh, will make their voices heard in a sovereign, free, and independent fashion on the international scene. Um, President, ladies and gentlemen, Africa knows what it wants. The African people and those of the global south are frustrated because they feel that they're insulted, dehumanized, and sometimes they ask, who are you to flout our humanity in this way? Who are you to despise us in this fashion? Who are you to humiliate us like this? Our common uh, organization, the African Union, is working uh, to make heard the hope and voice of an Africa which is sovereign, which wishes to be sovereign, free, and independent uh, on the international stage. But we're also working within the framework of the African Political Alliance launched in Lomé, in Togo. Rivalries amongst the great powers must not instantly become African rivalries. For we, as African nations, the challenge is to avoid taking sides in rivalries which are not ours. We have to fight our own battles, which are inter alia combating neocolonialism combating poverty, bringing about the industrialization of our continent and economic prosperity, achieving peace, combating de-Africanization in Africa, and fighting for an African renaissance and dignity, the struggle to shake off any foreign yoke definitively. Uh, committing ourselves to achieve better representation of our continent uh, amongst the family of nations and continents. Our combats are not those of the West nor of the East. E even less are they of any shore or part of the world. We have to focus on our current, our own uh, battles and those to come. International uh, uh, politics cannot uh, be reduced to a divided arena where you have to side with one camp against another. We want a reformed international system based on values and principles respecting everybody, respecting the rights of peoples to adopt their own positions freely as suits them on the international stage the right of peoples to decide for themselves implies that each state has a right to behave as it wishes on the international stage respecting its international engagements looking at the major transnational challenges of our centuries such as climate change and combating international terrorism our views may meet those of others but they must remain our own views, decided upon in accordance with our own agendas. It is no longer a, a question uh, for the Africa that we want to see to be relegated to the background as the world develops. The Africa of which I speak is no longer ready to accept the propensity of certain countries to make the geostrategical concerns African concerns. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the challenges of our world are indeed great, and the new African positions regarding external relations express the dynamic of renewal and a change of paradigm. The time has come for an African and Pan-African awakening when our continent is aware of itself and its uh, internal responsibilities as well as those to the rest of the world. Africa needs a partnership that respects the dignity of each and every one. We want to be your partners and not your subjects. 
We want to serve our peoples and not to serve foreign interests. This uh, new movement is not, we repeat, is not aimed against anyone. It is the expression of a new Africa, of an African Africa, uh, an Africanophone Africa, which wants to be free, sovereign, independent, and master of itself. So, for African youth, it is clear, these words are clear, we are weary by paternalism. We are weary of your scorn of our public opinions, your scorn of our people and our leaders. We are weary of your condescendence. We are weary of your arrogance. We are weary. We're weary. We're weary. Thank you. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Regional Integration, and Togolese abroad of Togo.